Hello. In this video, I'm going to show how I measure the resonant frequency of an ultrasonic transducer and also show how to correctly machine and tune a suitable horn for screwing onto the end of it. So this is the circuit that I'm using. I've got a sine wave signal generator putting out a few volts and this is connected to both the ultrasonic transducer and a 100 ohm resistor in series. This resistor will allow us to measure the current flowing through the circuit. An oscilloscope is connected to uh, channel 1 is connected to the signal generator output that tells us the voltage applied and channel 2 is connected to the 100 ohm resistor which tells us the current flowing. And by adjusting the frequency of the signal generator we can look at the current draw and find the resonant frequency where the current draw is greatest. So I've got my signal generator here, oscilloscope and this is the ultrasonic transducer. This is a bare transducer. I'm going to start off with that and then attach various horns and show you how the resonant frequency shifts. So let's set up the cameras and do some measurements. So we're starting off with the Bayer transducer. You can see there's nothing attached to the end of it. These sort of transducers are usually used for attaching directly to the bottom of an ultrasonic cleaner tank. We're currently set at about 13 kilohertz and I'm going to increase it gradually. 20 23, 24, 25, 26. Now you can see the current starting to increase. 27, 28. Something looks to be happening now, so I'll move to a finer adjustment. Keep on increasing the frequency until that point there, which is the resonant frequency where the current draw is a maximum. If we increase the frequency further, the current decreases. Now you'll also notice that the yellow waveform, that's the voltage, decreases slightly. That's simply because the signal generator can't actually deliver very much current, so its output voltage drops ever so slightly. But that's, that's no big deal. So looking at this again, we can see that below resonance the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. This makes sense because the transducer appears as essentially a simple capacitive load. Whereas at resonance both current and voltage are in phase so the transducer appears as a pure resistive load. Which makes it quite easy to drive with an inverter because you don't have to worry about leading or lagging currents. Now if we set this to the resonant frequency, I'll show you what happens if we load the transducer. I'm going to do that just by placing my, the palm of my hand on the end of it. You can see how the current drops quite dramatically. So by loading it, I'm increasing its resistance, or its impedance, because it's a, an AC circuit, so it draws less current. Show you that again. Whenever I uh, hold it tightly in my hand, it reduces the current draw. What we really wanted to know was the resonant frequency, and the resonant frequency is 28.58 kilohertz. So we're going to make a note of that and we're now going to try working out how long the horn should be for attaching to the end of the transducer. Now let's say we're going to make the horn from aluminium which is probably the easiest material to work with. The speed of sound in aluminium 
depending on who you read, uh, depending on the alloy, the speed of sound can vary quite a bit. So it's impossible to work out an exact number. Uh, you have to work out something, make it a bit longer, then measure it. Actually do it in, in practice. So, I'm going to take for a speed of sound uh, 5,800 meters per second. So, uh, if you can see that calculator there, we've got a frequency of 28.58 kilohertz. So, one wavelength is going to be 5,800 meters per second divided by 28.58 kilohertz, which is about 20 centimeters. So, half a wavelength. Try dividing by 2 would be better. Half of a wavelength is 10 centimetres. So in theory, if I cut a piece of aluminium rod 10 centimetres long, screwed it on the end of the transducer, it would resonate at the same frequency. In practice, that is highly unlikely to happen. So what I've got, this is just a piece of scrap rod I found in the offcuts box. This I've made to 11 centimetres long. So it's a little bit longer. Personally, I would make it longer still, another centimetre, just to be on the safe side. I've drilled and tapped one end of this for the adapter stud that allows it to attach to the end of the transducer. So let's screw this on and see what resonant frequency we get for the transducer plus horn system. So we take our transducer, make sure the face is clean, screw in the adapter stud, and then take our horn blank and screw it on. I'm just going to do this uh, hand tight. In practice you might want to use a wrench to be absolutely sure it's attached. So. We've got our transducer and horn, which we hope will resonate lower than the resonant frequency of the transducer alone. So we can shorten the horn and bring the resonant frequency up. So, looking at the waveforms, we'll go back down and start at a low frequency again. It's always best to start at a low frequency and work up higher. Let's see what we've got. 15, 16, 17, 18, 20... Coming up to something... About there. Okay. Nice resonance there. At 25.21 kilohertz. So, let's make a little note of that. 25.21 kilohertz. That's obviously too low. So we'll take the horn off of here again, take it over to the lathe and remove a couple of millimetres from the end, bring it back, screw it on, check it again and see how much that has increased the resonant frequency by. So we've shortened this blank by 2 millimetres. Let's reattach it and see what effect that has had on the resonant frequency. Before we had a resonance at 25.21 and we now have a resonance at, it looks like, 25.44. So it has increased it slightly. We would repeat this process, gradually removing material checking it every time until we got to a frequency that was as close as possible to that of the original Bayer transducer. Now instead of continuing that tuning process with this piece of metal, 
since it wouldn't really show much. Um, I will show you the finished result with the horn that I made previously. This is a stepped horn and it has already been tuned. So let's attach that and see what resonant frequency we get. Increase our frequency here and we get a resonance looks like at 29.5 kilohertz. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, that's higher than the original resonant frequency of 28.5 or so. Indeed it is. That's because when I originally designed this horn, I wanted to use it for doing ultrasonic drilling, which requires a little drill tip like this. That's a steel pin soldered into a brass bolt. Now the addition of that drill tip to the horn will shift its resonant frequency slightly. So as I was shortening this horn and measuring the frequency each time, I made sure to do it with the drill tip attached. And this is very important. You have to decide in advance if you're going to have a drill tip or end effector or anything else attached to the end of this and then tune the horn with that in mind. You can't simply have a plain horn, tune it, and then decide you want to add something to it and uh, drill a hole in the end. That will, will totally change things. So if we screw in the drill tip and tighten it up, and look at the resonant frequency now, again I'll start low and increase we can see that the resonance occurs at 28 kilohertz. And this was close enough for me to the original resonant frequency of the Bayer transducer. So that is a tuned horn which matches the transducer pretty much perfectly. Now just for interest's sake, I'm going to show you some other tips that I use just to see what variation of frequency there is. Some of these I haven't actually measured, so it'll be interesting to see. This is a... come on, focus. This is just a plain flat tip, which I made to screw into the end here. Let's see... Oh, that's a little bit higher frequency. Actually, have I got... no, sorry, it isn't. That is 26.9 kilohertz, so it's a little bit lower, but not too far off. I'd guess within maybe... maybe one kilohertz of the original resonant frequency would be... would be good. Now this is an interesting one. If I screw in a little piece of threaded rod with a nut, I can show you how you can actually tune the frequency. Put that in there. And that resonates at what looks like 24.5 kilohertz. If I screw the rod further in, It now resonates at 25.3 kilohertz, so it increases. So you could tune it to an extent with, uh, with such a device. It's important to note that not all tools, shall we call them, things that you screw onto the end, give a sharp resonance. Uh, this was an attempt I made to do ultrasonic cutting with a, a scalpel blade. Now if I screw this in, taking care not to chop my fingers off, and try and find a resonant frequency, uh, you'll find that there isn't actually a very clearly defined resonance.
There's maybe something there. There's maybe something there, but that's at 31 kilohertz, which is much, much higher. So, for whatever reason, that sort of tip doesn't give a sharp resonance. It may be that all this stuff here, for want of a better term, doesn't give a nice clean reflection to the sound waves bouncing up and down inside here. So, not all tips uh, work, so, work so well. I've also made a simple extension for the horn. I use this for sonicating uh, liquids because this is all very, when this is held in the clamp, in the mounting clamp, it's all very uh, bulky. Um, so, screw this in. Now again, the length of this piece was machined, was adjusted, so that the resonant frequency of this entire thing, if I can fit it all on the camera, this entire system again matched that of the bare transducer. So we'll screw that in and find the resonance which is 28.1. One kilohertz again, very close to that of the original transducer. When we've got this extension horn attached, I'll show you something interesting. We've got it adjusted to exactly to resonance. Now, I'll zoom in a little here. This distance here is a half wavelength, and there will be a point of maximum vibration, an antinode at the tip and a point of maximum vibration, an antinode, at the tip of the previous horn as well. In between them there will be a point of zero vibration, a node. Now watch what happens to the waveforms if I, for a start, pinch the horn in the centre at the node, nothing very much happens. If I pinch it at the end, you can see I'm loading the horn significantly because the, the current drops. Likewise, if I pinch it here, the current again drops. This illustrates how important it is when you're actually mounting this whole affair to have it attached at a nodal point. That's the purpose of this ridge in the this first horn here. That gets sandwiched between two O-rings in a little clamp that I made up. And the last horn we'll show is this thing, which I made for trying ultrasonic soldering. It's a piece of aluminium bar with a piece of threaded rod acting as a soldering tip. This was heated with a small gas torch. Again, we can screw that in. And its resonant frequency is 28 kilohertz, just under 28 kilohertz. So again, it's a good frequency match. So that's covered the basics of um, measuring resonant frequency, tuning horns, etc. I'll finish up with a couple of um, minor points and then just run through a summary again of the whole procedure. I mentioned back at the beginning that it's very important to use a sine wave in this particular circuit for measuring resonant frequency. Um, you cannot, or rather it's much much harder to do, by simply connecting the transducer to the output of an inverter, a square wave inverter, and trying to measure the frequency that way. And I'll show you why. Let's... I've, I've gone back to the Bayer transducer again, so... There it is at resonance, 28.57 kilohertz. Now, let's say we switched to a square wave for this. Um, how do we do that? Waveform... 
square wave. Okay. You can see for a start that the current waveform is pretty weird looking. You get spikes at the transitions because again this is a capacitive load driven with a square wave waveform and you'll get large currents flowing. And you can see how the a bit hard to tell exactly what the resonance is. For example, there I might think there's a resonance or something, where in fact there isn't. Apart from the difficulty of actually distinguishing the signal, um, using a square wave can give you sort of false indications of resonant frequency. If I go to one-third of the resonant frequency, which is 28.57 divided by 3, 9.5 kilohertz, um, change the time base here a little, you can see that we are actually getting resonance in the current waveform at the 28 kilohertz. This is because the transducer is being excited by the third harmonic of the square wave applied. Similarly, if we applied a frequency of one-fifth the resonance, um, which is 28.57 divided by 5, that's 5.7 kilohertz, Again, there we get it excited by the fifth harmonic. So, in short, trying to measure resonant frequency by using a square wave, square wave excitation waveform is... don't do it. It's not worth the trouble. Use a nice sine wave and make life easy on yourself. Um, With a sine wave, it's very clear where the resonance occurs. The last thing I wanted to check is whether the resonant frequency is affected by temperature significantly, because these transducers do warm up through operation. So I'm going to set this to resonance. There. And I'm just going to warm it up with a little gas torch here. Right, finally got it lit. And we'll just heat this up. See if there's any change in resonant frequency. It'll take a little while to warm up. So started off at 25.43. And sure enough, it's shifting to a lower frequency, 25.41, still just look warm to the touch, keep on heating, Twenty five point three seven. That's maybe forty degrees or something. So higher temperature does decrease the resonant frequency slightly, um, but not particularly significantly. So it's quite interesting. I've never tried that before. So it's good to good to check. Okay, so hopefully I've explained how to measure the resonant frequency of a transducer or transducer plus horn system and also, also given you some ideas on how to correctly determine the length of a suitable horn. I'm just going to run through a brief summary again of the procedure. 
First of all, you have to set up your sine wave signal generator and oscilloscope to measure this. I can't stress how important that is. Don't try to use your inverter to, to do this. It's, it's too complex. Get a signal generator. If you don't have one, they're cheap enough to buy. And get an oscilloscope. Again, beg, borrow, steal, whatever. It just makes your life so much easier. Measure the resonant frequency of the bare transducer without anything attached to it. Just to remind you what a bare transducer looks like again. That is a bare transducer. No horn, nothing. Okay? Measure that. Calculate an estimate of your required length for a horn. As I say, the speed of sound value that you get can vary depending on alloy, depending on who you read. So pick a number, calculate a half wavelength, and add a couple of centimeters. It's just aluminium, it's cheap enough, so again, make your life easier. So you make uh, an over-dimensioned horn. You make a horn that is too long, initially, with a suitable fitting for attaching it to the transducer, obviously. Measure the, reson measure the resonant frequency of the transducer, plus your horn, plus any desired tip or tool that you want on the end of it. Again, don't go through this whole process with a plain ended horn and then realise, oh I want to do ultrasonic drilling, drill a hole in the end, put a tip in and find you've changed the resonant frequency. You have to think in advance what you're going to do, use this for and plan accordingly. Shorten the horn little by little until the resonant frequency of the entire system matches that of the bare transducer. Uh, this can take some time, um, especially for example this horn where it does have a threaded fitting on the, the end. If you shorten this progressively, you'll have to redrill and thread the hole again. It's laborious, but you just have to do it. Also, I maybe didn't stress this in the video, I demonstrated how when I had this extension on, I demonstrated how holding it at the node compared with the anti-node varied the, the damping on the transducer. If you've designed a horn such as this one which has a mounting point, this ridge for example, you have to keep that mounting point in the middle of the horn as you shorten it, which means you must shorten it from both ends. I hope that makes sense. For example, when I was shortening this horn, I had to machine material off both this end and the other end, which again meant redrilling and threading that hole as it got shorter. Um, if you just remove material off one end, obviously your mounting point won't be in the middle anymore and you'll lose efficiency. So keep shortening the horn until the resonant frequency matches that of the bare transducer. At that point, you can now connect your transducer horn and tip assembly to your inverter and adjust its oscillating frequency to match the resonant frequency of the transducer. Build a setup with a, sin a sine wave generator and a scope, measure the bare transducer, estimate horn length, measure your horn, keep shortening it until you get a resonance that matches the original transducer and then connect it up. So I hope that answered some questions. This is the the most critical part of the entire system. Building the driver is in many ways relatively easy. You're just building a inverter oscillator. Um, the the concept of the, the ultrasonic transducer, horn, resonance, mechanical resonance, electrical resonance, that's probably a little unfamiliar to most people. It was to me when I started playing with this. I, I didn't understand how, you know, mechanical resonance worked uh, in conjunction with a, an ultrasonic transducer. 
so it, it took me a lot of playing around to, to determine it. But, like I say, once you've got the setup, it's not really that difficult a process to go through. Um, okay, that's probably long enough. If you've got any questions, let me know and I'll try to help. I hope you found that interesting. Bye for now.